this is a question for Mr. Edelson. Uh, you have uh, this six-point plan, and uh, it sounds like it's a, a very uh, aggressive approach to getting certain things accomplished. The only thing is, there are no specifics in it. Not only are there no specifics in it, but you say nothing about how you intend to finance any of these things. Now you talk about the Southbury Training School. That's currently owned by the state. They are not going to give it to Southbury for free. How do you intend to pay for it? In addition to which, if we're going to build all of these recreational facilities, we here at Heather Heritage Village don't have anyone who's going to use these facilities. So why would we be interested in your plan and what it would cost us personally in taxes. Thank you. Well, uh, interesting question. I'd have to say that um, you really haven't read the issue papers because every one of them has specifics. So let's take the training school. There are three pieces to the training school, or three pieces to the position paper. The first one says that the first thing we need to do is educate ourselves about what's out there. That was the purpose of my story about my conversation with Rob Kane. I don't think that'll cost a dime, and that means that we have, let me explain. If people don't know what they're voting about when, let's say, the training school wants to, uh, or the state decides it, it's ready to sell that land, and we don't know what's out there, we haven't thought about it, then we're not going to be a prepared citizenry. So, unlike Bill, who feels that it's good to have a standing committee of a few people meeting about this, my view is government's responsibility is to share information. Okay, so that's the first thing, and there's no cost there. Now, if we move to the third specific there, it was a concrete proposal for discussion about how the state could move itself forward towards closing down the, the training school. Uh, let me just back up one second. Are you aware how much money we get each year from the training school? Okay. We get on the order of about 300 to 400, sometimes more, $100,000 a year from the training school. It's not called taxes, it's called payment in lieu of taxes. Why? Because they get a lot of the services that we provide them, whether it's roads, police, back up on the, the ambulance service. So we get, a, we get money from them. And if they close down and say we no longer need these services, we lose that money. So being proactive so that seven years from now, even if they close down, uh, and we sit there and say, okay, everybody, pony up uh, $300,000 more, I don't want to be in that position. That's why I want to start now. But I go back to my third piece, which is what we want, or what I want, is a way to take that property and convert it into taxable land. Remember, we've got people working up there, in addition to that $300,000, $400,000 a year, we have people working up there who participate in our community because they live here or they shop here, so they generate income for us. So we want a long-term solution that keeps money coming from the area known as the training school continually coming into Southbury's economy as well as into our town hall. So if you read my third, my position paper, you will see a specific proposal for how uh, the state could move forward in an expedited way, it's not going to happen in months. Anything that happens up there will take years. But the sooner you begin, the, s the better off you are, about how you convert that into a, uh, a medical research facility and a mes medical residential care facility for the elderly. There is no doubt that the problem being addressed up there of the severely disabled is a very sensitive subject. Closing down the training school does not make the problem go away. And I think we can have a long-term solution there that takes advantages of Southbury strength, while at the same time bringing in revenue to the town and creating good jobs for people. Now, am I going to sit here and tell you that proposal is ready to go and is ready to be signed off? No. It needs input from lots of other people. We need to begin to lobby the state to do that. But if we don't start the ball rolling, who are we going to expect to start the ball rolling? If not us, who? So that's one. On the, uh, I want to clarify because a couple of people have made, uh, I think have misread my paper on the youth activities. I specifically talked about a community facility like a YMCA. Now a YMCA is not just for youth. 
And the one thing that I hear when I go door knocking throughout Southbury is people want more venues where they can have movies, theater, plays, productions. That comes from people in my age bracket and older, as well as the youth. When we talk about a YMCA, we have the ability as a community to figure out what do we want in there. But a YMCA is a private entity. It's not a town facility. But we've already been approached many times. Some people tell me going back to 1997 by the Waterbury YMCA, you know, the Waterbury Y, saying, you know, Southbury is an excellent place for a Y. Your location on 84, perfect. The demographics of your town, perfect. You already have a summer camp that has children from throughout Southbury attending there, and that's functioning well. Why not grow upon that? We've never had the leadership, we've never had the champion who's gonna come forward and bring the community together to create that facility. Now, I have to be honest, as I said before, my major concern right now is about youth, okay? And I know Bill shares this, when we read about suicides, when we read about murder by uh, one of our young people against another one, that doesn't make me feel good about my community. And that says we need to reach out and participate and do something about that. But the YMCA is not out of your pocket. It's people coming together, raising private money, and moving forward uh, with that. Sorry. The state of Connecticut does give us money for the training school, not three or four hundred thousand, more like two hundred thousand in the last two or three years. And Mr. Edelson's governor, Mr. Malloy, has now taken that away from well, my understanding to save money. The YMCA has been actively looking at property in Southbury to build. They looked at the empty lot uh, next to the Southbury Post Office, which is excess uh, government property from the Postal Service. They couldn't afford it. They looked at the uh, truck museum up on Route 188. It's in Middlebury, right across from the Southbury town line. Those people wanted four and a half million dollars for that property. That's beyond their reach. So it's a question of the YMCA being able to raise the funds and find the land in Southbury to do it. It is a private organization. Uh, we have been in uh, discussions with uh, the Southbury Training School. They have a large uh, uh, building up there that has a movie theater in it. We would like to get use of that and create a uh, venue over there. So far, we have not been successful in doing that, but the idea has been in our minds. Uh, it is state property. We're going to need their permission to do it, or the problem is it's in the middle of their property, so I doubt if they're going to cut a piece of property out of the middle for the town of Southbury, but you never know what's going to happen over there. Thank you. Okay, just a couple more questions. Rod, you, who's next? Uh, it's Fran Owen. Just talk into the mic, Fran, so people can hear you. I don't think your mic is on. Just tap it, just tap it. No, it's not. Yes. There you go. It's called Take It Takes a Wine. You know that. Okay. All right. And I have a question. You mentioned uh, increasing the grand list. You know, it all comes down to money. What will make our taxes and our bill rate uh, keep it low or lower? Uh, I noticed, of course, uh, borders left town. Uh, we have that space available. Uh, then I see that when the uh, film rental place closed, we're getting another bank. What do you have any plans to, and I'll pass this to uh, Bill Davis as well, to bring in any other kind of businesses that would enhance the grant list, the lower tax? Our Economic Development Commission, the EDC, is actively pursuing. They have a, a list on their website that they've disseminated to a lot of other trade journals and things of available spaces in Southbury. Uh, I don't think I'm uh, giving away anything to tell you that TJ Maxx is supposed to come into the uh, space where Borders has been. Panera Bread is on the verge of opening where they were always intended in the building over by the administration area of uh, the Southbury Plaza. So we are doing things. 
Uh, South Perry actually is in pretty good shape when you come to vacant buildings and storefronts. Other towns are a lot of worse off than we are, which doesn't help us a lot, but it tells us that we are a very good place to grow and to do business in. I think I, I actually agree with Bill about that as far as our current vacant space. Um, but I think we have to look longer term and, and recognize that what appeals to businesses uh, is the quality of life in that town. Uh, I, I just, first let me just say, we still are in a free enterprise system. So it's individual corporations that make decisions about whether or not they want to open a particular store or not in our town. What we do as a town is make that place attractive. That means a town hall that runs efficiently. That means a town hall that is very customer service oriented so that when people come in, they are greeted, they are recognized that they are there to do business and they should be treated accordingly. Uh, they see a land use process that makes sense, uh, that doesn't seem like it's just a, uh, something that lasts forever. Uh, and so, and then the quality of our life, and that goes back to some of the things Bill and I both are talking about when we talk about the, the rural or suburban uh, look and feel of this place. I, I prefer the word rural, uh, especially when you get up into the purchase. Um, I, I would like to share with you a concern I've shared with some people about retail, which is we are in a new age, the age of the internet. Uh, when I talk to my children about going shopping, they're talking about something very different than when I talk about going shopping. And when I see uh, spaces out there uh, and the number of banks, I just can't, can't get it my head around the idea ten years from now, all those banks will be there and all those stores will be there selling clothes when I just see so many young people who are going online, whether it's Land's End or uh, you name it, I, I've got uh, emails galore coming into me saying I should shop there. So I think we have to think a little more strategically about what, is, uh, what does the word retail mean in the future, retail space, and what that might actually mean for the way our Main Street looks down the road. I don't have any easy answers, but I think we're in the very beginning of what is a uh, commercial revolution uh, in the way we do business, and that is going to affect our town, the way it looks and feels, affect our revenues, uh, all those things are going to come into play. So uh, that's something that I think about quite a bit. I don't have an easy answer to. Thank you. Uh, the South Perry Corporate Park is a, is a good example of a business opportunity in, in South Perry that, that we have been trying to uh, actively sell for seven or eight years. It's a very difficult piece of property. Uh, on it, on October the 19th, we're bringing a strategic planning group together uh, under the EDC and my auspices. There'll be about 35 uh, stakeholders, if you will. I don't like that word, but stakeholders that will discuss. We last had a planning session in 2004, so I think it's time to revisit that. We have a developer that could be interested in the property. Uh, he has certain ideas on how it would be developed. There is a conflict, and I have told them this from my years at planning about how you move traffic in and off the site and, uh, and apartments. They want apartments on site, and that's going to be a very difficult and contentious negotiation, but we have to start somewhere, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring people together and get their ideas and see if we can't come out with some kind of a, an agreement with this developer so that we can move forward, but it's a very difficult site to 